My name is Alicia Edwards and I will be presenting on James W. Fowler, The Six Stages of Faith Development. James Fowler was born in Reedsville, North Carolina in 1940 and he died October 2015. He was raised by his parents. His father was a Methodist bishop and his mother was from a family of Quakers. He was homeschooled by his grandmother until the first grade. His grandmother influenced his life in a very tremendous way. She would tell him influential stories about her life, about her faith, and her belief in God. And he believes that hearing these stories was the reason why he majored in history uh, in college. He struggled with keeping good friends because he moved every four years due to his father's appointed position in the Methodist Church. He identified with his spirituality and religion at an early age. He recalled a time when he was with his father. His father was preaching in a camp in Avery County in North Carolina where he preached and taught every night. It was kind of like a revival. And about a hundred men were crowded into spaces in this prison camp. And Fowler realized at that point that there was a lot of African-American men uh, in this, a lot of African-American men in this camp. And he realized that there wasn't very many African-American people living in the counties, in the North Carolina counties. So at this point, he started to realize how social injustice works, and that's how he started to really care about inequality and social injustice. So one night while his father was preaching, the father decided to call persons to come forward and to make a commitment to Christ. And it was at that point in his life that he, along with some other prisoners, walked to the front of the camp and gave their life to Christ. He, at that point, decided that he wanted to really dive into religion and faith. James Fowler, in his adulthood, he was a minister in the United Methodist Church, an American theologian and a professor of theology and human development at Emory University. He graduated from Duke University, he graduated from Drew Theological Seminary, and he earned his PhD at Harvard University in Religion and Society in 1971 with the focus of ethics and sociology of religion. He pursued postdoctoral studies at the Center for Moral Development at the Harvard Graduate School of Education, and he also taught at Harvard Divinity School Boston College, and Emory's Candler, Candler School of Theology. Dr. Fowler's most notable publication was the book he wrote, Stages of Faith, The Psychology of Human Development and the Quest for Meaning. The book was published in 1981 and is now available across the world and is also available in German, Korean, and Portuguese. Stages of Faith was written to help others understand the pilgrimage of faith and faith development. Dr. Fowler outlines in his book the six stages of faith development from infancy to adulthood. He also used the following theory, theorist theories in his book, which were based on Erickson and Piaget theories. Here is the chart summarizing Dr. Fowler's six stages of faith. Dr. Fowler began to prepare to write his book by interviewing over 600 people. He interviewed children, he interview, interviewed men and women, and their ages ranged from four to 88. He also interviewed people of many faiths, Jewish, Catholic, Christian, Protestant, and atheists. In many cases, the interviews were very in-depth because he wanted to get a glimpse of their lives and how they viewed faith. Stage zero is the premial undifferentiated faith. This stage includes ages birth to two. It's the first impression a child has of faith. This stage is introduced by parents and caregivers. The seeds of faith are planted, individuals start trusting others, the individuals, the child starts to identify with warmth, security, uh, trusting their parents, trusting that they'll take care of them. This stage aligns with Eric Erickson's trust versus mistrust. 
Stage one, the intuitive projective faith. This normally happens between ages three and seven. This stage is highly influenced by parents. Children can be heavily influenced, uh, their perception of faith, based stories and pictures. So they get a lot of their faith. They're thinking about faith through stories, myths, pictures that are told uh, either at church or by their parents. This is the stage when language and communication is developed during this stage. It's difficult for children during this stage to determine fantasy versus what is real. And according to Fowler, this stage aligns with Piaget's stage of pre-operational thinking. The second stage, mythic, literal faith, this normally happens between ages 7 to 12. Beliefs and morals are met with literal interpretations. Faith begins to have meaning. Children accept the stories and the myths that have been told in their life without question. They have strong beliefs in fairness and justice. And they finally understand that God is a physical realm. Stage three, synthetic conventional faith. This normally happens between ages 12 to adulthood. It usually begins at adolescent and teens begin to think abstractly about faith. Faith provides a connector between the involvement, involvement in one's life, family, friends, Facebook, social media, Instagram, and church. They start formulating their own belief systems they, they start to be exposed to different ideas of faith, and some people, according to Fowler, remain in this stage all of their life. Stage four, the individuative reflective faith. This normally happens in the mid-20s to late-30s, and sometimes even beyond. In this stage, people begin to take personal responsibility for one's beliefs and feelings. They, this is actually a stage of critical reflection. A person starts to critically examine their faith and beliefs, and they begin to recognize other people's beliefs about faith. Stage five, the conjunctive faith. This normally happens at mid, during the midlife crisis. People begin to look over what was suppressed or unrecognized. They begin to see life as a mystery. Fowler says that this is a very complex stage and it's difficult to adequately describe. Normally people during this stage, they look more deeply at self and their faith. They begin to realize the true meaning of faith and what one actually believes. People begin to dialogue with each other about people's faith and they may even uh, correct their own faith. And so there, people are now open to questions during this stage and they're willing to talk about their faith and their beliefs and listen and rationalize what their faith and what their beliefs are. Stage six happens, according to Fowler, later in adulthood. This stage is rarely achieved, according to Fowler, by individuals. An individual in, during this stage has a deeper understanding of other people's, of other people in general. Sacrifice, they normally, at this stage, people normally sacrifice their own well-being for the cause. And these people normally dedicate their lives to serving others. It is their moral duty. And Fowler believed that only three people actually reached this stage in their life. And it was Gandhi, Martin Luther King, and Mother Teresa. Although he never spoke to them or interviewed them, this was his belief. Strengths and weaknesses, uh, according to James Fowler's theories, Fowler's theories provides individuals with a framework to identify where they and others are in terms of faith development. Fowler believes that faith is something that everyone has, whether they are consciously aware of it or not. And then Fowler's theory finally continues to be used in pastoral counseling and spiritual care in seminaries and other faith-based education institutions worldwide. Weaknesses. Researchers argue that Fowler's theory may simply be a statement of what he thought faith development ought to look like. Stage one is possible exploitation of a child's imagination for evil purposes. One cannot advance or skip stages. So for example, one cannot move from stage two to stage five. 
And stage six is nearly impossible to attain. And then a lot of people argue that a lot of focus is on age groups and they just don't see how this is possible. Revelant implications for social work. Faith and spirituality is an important component of most people's individual lives and part of their overall makeup, along with their physical, intellectual, and emotional self. People's spirituality encompasses a higher power of supreme being to whom they can turn, especially during difficult times. People can utilize their belief system as a strength which aids their ability to practice resilience. And social workers can utilize the concepts of spirituality and or religion often to help make meaning of the struggles clients may be facing. Here is a notable quote from Dr. James Fowler. Faith is an orientation of total person, giving purpose and goal to one's hopes and strivings, thoughts and actions. This concludes my presentation on Dr. James W. Fowler. Please remember to keep the faith. Thank you for listening.